Hey YouTube world, I am back with another video. As you all know, I love my fair share of designer brands, but I also love all the indie brands that really do come out with quality and really innovative designs that we can all appreciate. I'm constantly browsing around for like new options and alternatives for both you and me, but mostly me. <laughs> because of my searches, I am constantly being berated by Instagram ads. And let me tell you, a lot of the time it does work like this Actic Nation bag and then the Floron bag, and then of course the Advain bag here. I do a lot of filtering of what appeals to me and what doesn't, so I figure it would be interesting to go over seven brands that I've seen on Instagram as well as a lot of YouTubers that do talk about it and decide that I will not spend my money on. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for me to let me know you really enjoy this video and want to see more. So let's get right into it. Of course, these are all my opinions. If you have any of these bags and are really enjoying them, I'm very happy for you. Who cares what I think? I'm just some person on YouTube flapping my fat fingers around and expressing my thoughts. So this is really all just for education and entertainment. So I split it into two different categories. The first category would be if I were to be gifted these bags, I would carry them, but I wouldn't spend my money on, right? The second category would be, hey, I got gifted by, you know, whether it's friends or family or by the brand, I still wouldn't carry them because I don't like them. That sounds kind of savage, but even for the brands I choose not to carry, I've done extensive research on them and I do have a lot more appreciation for the brand, even though it still doesn't change the fact that I won't spend my money on them or carry them. So these are uh, a few of my bags that have gone through my filtering process. Instagram has definitely, you know, moved me and made me want to buy them. Um, so I did make a couple videos and I'll link them down below and I'll create a playlist if you want to explore more indie brands and all of the reviews I've done on these bags. So let me move these out of the way. So I got my computer here, so I have a frame of reference. I have everything pulled up, but of course, for your viewing pleasure, I will make sure to put that on the screen so that you can see it better. I'm gonna go over the first category of if I were to be gifted and I still wouldn't carry them. The first one is going to be Teddy Blake. I'm sorry, I know a lot of YouTubers love Teddy Blake, but unfortunately, I do not. I do appreciate that they have a lot of, you know, Birkin inspired pieces or a lot of dupes, so to speak and they really push the fact that you don't have to pay for retail prices of designer bags to get quality pieces, and they really do emphasize on how they are made in Italy, right? Sure, I mean, that's cool. I mean, I wouldn't mind using a quality bag made from China, right? We all know and really have been hyping Salmang, and it's made in China, but just because it's made in Italy doesn't mean it's automatically equate to its good quality, right? I'm a, I grew up with my mom, you know, telling me, me pointing out specific bags. Oh, look, it's made in Italy. It must be good. And she's like, just because it's made in Italy, it could be made by some random person in, that's in Italy, right? It could be some street vendor gra grabbing two pieces of leather and sewing it together and so made in Italy. It doesn't mean it gets the reputations of every single piece that comes from Italy is good. And I've been to Italy. I've been to a lot of these shops that, you know, sell leather goods and all of it's made in Italy, but it is, it's actually not great. So... Let's not, let's not get mesmerized by the fact that it is made in Italy and that it's good. So again, I know a lot of people have been raving about this, but then I also seen a lot of reviews that says it's, it's, it's terrible. Like people would get it and it's plasticky quality or it smells like plastic and it's just like not good quality, right? So obviously I've never seen one in person, but I will say that all of the designs, it just doesn't really appeal to me. And from what I hear that they're gifting so many bags um, that it's just like, I don't know, does that really kind of goes over to the stereotype of what an influencer does? I'm getting controversial. Please don't come for me. <laughs> I'm just, again, these are just thoughts that go into my head as a consumer, right? Are these influencers pushing Teddy Blake because they were got, they get gifted a free bag? I don't know. I, I'm just, again, I don't know these YouTubers personally, but based on the research I've done, I can tell you that it's not something that appeals to me mainly because of the designs, because it looks like it's all just dupes and there's nothing really innovative in my opinion. And like I said, I did do a lot of research. I was looking on their website. 
And most of them, like the website, again, I think the part of what indie brands are doing nowadays to compete with big luxury is that they're very transparent. They have a story to tell saying these are, you know, whoever the owners are, what are their ethos, what are they, uh, you know, how they make the, the craftsmanship and whatever, right? And that's kind of the appeal of why we like these indie brands. But when I looked at Teddy Blake's website, I don't, I don't see anything. They just keep pushing um, that it's made in Italy and they, they're really a fraction of the cost of designer brands and you shouldn't pay for you know those retail prices of these big luxury brands, which I appreciate that message. But when I was trying to look up information, whether it's on their website or if it's just Googling it, I couldn't really find any information like where they source their leather from, where are, are their factories, you know, what, what kind of process does it go through? Are they, you know, abiding by EU standards? None of that information was on their website, nor could I find really any articles articles um, by like, you know, Forbes or Bloomberg or whatever. Usually these indie brands get recognized by these places and they give a little bit more information talking about, you know, interviewing the owners and the manufacturers or whatever. Not nothing. So and then they also go into very fluffy de details on what true cost and what true market value is for, you know, making a bag. Right. You know, somebody from Leather Tennis Sign has um, experts and he has credibility so to speak, right? We all don't know. He's just a guy on the internet. But he, at least he goes into technical details and helps us understand like, hey, the cost of the leather, the cost of craftsmanship, what, and, and explains the leather, but Teddy Blake doesn't really talk about any of that. And then also Cassie's recent video, if you haven't seen any of these people I'm talking about, which I'm sure, unless you live under a rock, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen, you know, at least some of their videos. Um, she does talk about why brands charge a lot more, brand ambassadorship, paying celebrities, you know, having brick and mortar store, having pop ups, right? Those are all things that factor into why a Gucci bag is like $2,000, right? Whereas Teddy Blake, there's like zero presence other than online. And one common thing I will try to cover with every brand I'm talking about um, is warranty, right? If you're so confident in your product, then you should have some sort of warranty. They have absolutely no warranty at all. So that's something to point out. And I'm just looking at, you know, their most popular brands that I've seen is the Kate bag. It's just, it looks, it looks very rigid. I don't know, it just doesn't really appeal to me. And all of the different colors doesn't really appeal to me. The other one that they have is the Ava, which is supposedly the Kelly or the Birkin dupe, more I think of the, the Kelly dupe. And it's just like, eh, it looks okay. It looks like something I would, find at TJ Maxx. So yeah, not, not, I'm truly not impressed. There's nothing innovative about this. All right. The second brand I want to go over is Aspinall of London. I've heard great things about Aspinall, Aspinall of London, and they had a lot of information on their website. Again, I can appreciate that. It's just not a brand that I am interested in because of the styles. So this brand was started back in 2001 by a British entrepreneur, and they really care about the art of giving, the quality, uh, sustainable kind of um, luxury and that overproducing, I think. Um, I'm looking through their website. It seems like they do give a lot of details, but I couldn't really figure out where the bags are made. Some of them were made in Spain, but then I also see um, ones that are possibly made in China or Turkey, right? So that wasn't extremely clear. They do have brick and mortar stores. And for me, it's just like, I kind of like their iconic bag, which is the Mayfair bag, right? I'm looking at it. Most of them are the shiny croc, mock croc leather. And I just do not like patent leather, right? And the style of it just seems so old, right? I feel like their packaging is much more prettier than the actual bag itself. Um, I know, that, again, a lot of YouTubers have been raving about Aspinall of London, but it just doesn't appeal to me because I feel like if I wear this bag, I look like the Queen of England and I'm clearly not the Queen of England, right? <laughs> um, but I do appreciate that they do offer a one year warranty and they do do the repairs. Um, and it seems like their customer service um, is pretty nice. So the third brand I want to go over is Oladia. Oladia? Oladia? I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but they were started back in 2021. There's not a whole lot of information. 
for every brand that I've done research on, I've, I've gained more knowledge and more understanding of what the brand is all about, you know, how they come in, came about their history, how they manufacture it, et cetera, et cetera. This is the one brand that got me even more confused the more I read on their website. The information is so conflicted. They talk about their leather, our recycled leathers. It's just like, okay, so is this actual leather? And if it's 100% a byproduct leather from like the food industry, but if it's from the food industry, it's not considered recycled leather, right? It's it's just leather that you got from the food industry where, you know, people eat beef and then they get leather. So it's not necessarily recycled. And then there's also re their terminology of replated leather. Like, what does that even mean? And we also don't know where any of this leather comes from. And they say that it is quality leather. And then they also have recycled um, their recycling program where you can actually um, like, why shouldn't I toss my tr bag in the trash can? You know, they sh you should go ahead and submit it back to them. And once you submit it back to them, they can reuse the leather, I guess, the leather pieces. And then you get 30% off your next bag with them if you were to submit your bag back to them. But then it's just like, okay, so if I'm purchasing a bag from you, how do I know the quality of this bag? Are you just taking pieces from someone's trashed bag that they submitted back to you and then incorporating that into my new piece? I, it just doesn't make any sense to me, right? Also for a brand that started back in 2021, how many of these bags do you expect for them to come back? Like, are, are your pieces just not quality enough that it, people are some, I mean, it's only 2023, right? So are you expecting people to like start returning bags to you so they can buy a different one? It's not like you have that many different options. So it's just like got me really confused. Like, can I trust the quality of your bag? Can I trust that you are using the best pieces or are you taking somebody else's scrap pieces from a trashed bag and making my bag with that? I mean, it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. Even more questionable is that you only have a three months warranty. Like it seems pretty standard for bags to have one year warranty, two year warranty, maybe even six months warranty, but you only have a three months warranty. What a company gives as a warranty, whether they honor it or not, at least advertiser, right? tells me how confident you are in your own products. So this brand, I just, I would not touch this with a 10 feet pole, let alone spending my money on something I don't like. You just created more confusion for me looking at your website. And I'm also looking at their designs, right? Looking at their best sellers. These just doesn't appeal to me. I watched a couple videos where people, uh, where they're, you know, advertising that you can wear this from day to night, from work to, you know, a night out. To me, like, this does not seem like I could wear this to a night out. It's like, sure, for a business meeting, I, I think that could be fine, but it, it, it's not something I would wear from day to night. This is a pure work bag, which I understand that's where they came from and they wanted something more functional as they're traveling for business and whatever, but this is not like, hey, this is a luxury bag that I can take to dinner. I mean, look at this backpack. This to me seems like a rip off from Zenrev. And then looking at this, I don't know who came out with it first, but this is looking very much like the Pauline um, tote bag that they came out with that is canvas. Again, I don't know who came out with it first, but this is looking very similar to that. The bucket bag just, I don't know, this looks like a pail, like, you know, one of those, you know, British people call it pails, um, but it looks like a bucket, like literally a bucket. I want a bucket bag, but I don't want it to look like a bucket where I'm carrying around, you know, slop. <laughs> okay, I'm getting a little spicy right now, but I don't wanna be looking, it just looks like a bucket. The only one I think is reasonably uh, good looking is their Echo bag. I do appreciate that particular design, but then I clicked on it it's recycled plastic. I mean, that's just, I don't know. I, I don't want a recycled plastic bag. All right, moving on to Freha New York. This is the fourth brand that I don't think I would wear based on what I know about the brand and the designs of it. So Freha was started back in 2019 in New York City. All of their pieces are made in China. And I do enjoy how transparent they are. They are a vegan company. And one of their pages actually lists out item by item of how much it costs to produce those particular pieces to compile into actually making the bag. So I really do uh, appreciate that. They do advertise that their bags are made of vegan ultra 
fiber. I don't know what that means. They don't really explain it that much, but supposedly it's better for the environment. Personally, I do not appreciate vegan bags um, just because I feel like the quality is not as good and I could be completely wrong. The most of the vegan pieces I have are like leather jackets, vegan leather jackets, and that's something I bought from back in the day because that's all I could afford. And the vegan leather, so to speak, is obviously plastic and then it started crumbling. So I refuse to buy um, anything that is quote unquote vegan leather, uh, whether it's clothing or if it's, you know, bags, especially bags. I do appreciate that they do everything in small batches so that they don't overproduce. It's a very cute story how the founder of this particular brand says that her parents um, do come and help out and inspect every single piece before they ship it out to New York for distribution. So that, I think that was a, a nice touch. So I'm looking at their two most popular brand, I believe, the Paloma Tote. Um, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's nothing like earth shattering. So if I were be gifted this bag, I may use it, but probably not. But because of the transparency, I might use it. But then again, going back to <clears throat> the vegan leather, I don't, I don't, I don't really care for vegan leather, so I probably won't use it. And then I'm looking at their tall taupe, which really looks like the Celine uh, single bag, which again, nothing earth shattering when it comes to the designs. So the last brand I wanna go over is Parisia Wang. And this is a very popular brand amongst all of the YouTubers that I've seen. And I actually do enjoy looking at uh, YouTubers reviewing the bag and how they are in love with it. And this brand was started back in 2016. I was looking into the story, what's behind it. And what's funny is that they cover more about the founder's heartbreak and how it inspired her to create a bag brand, which kind of doesn't really correlate. I guess like if you're going through a breakup, then you should focus on purchasing or creating a bag. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but... Um, moving moving on to the transparency, it is a little bit more transparency. They talk about where they have uh, all of their leather sourced. And I did read through their FAQs. These bags are all made in China and they are the same manufacturers as Chloe, Mulberry, and The Row. But doesn't really make sense. It kind of is conflicting information because I know that Chloe's bags are all made in Italy and Spain. And then Mulberry is England and Turkey. And then the row, they're all made in Italy. So are they just talking about the leather manufacturer or are they talking about the construction of the bag? So I was a little confused on that. They do offer a one-year warranty. So that's good to know. And I think the most popular one that they do have is the Madison Micro Top Handle Bag. It's cute. Again, nothing crazy. I think the functionality for this particular bag is completely okay. I am not a big fan of the buckle with this, with the ring hanging off of it. I know some people wear open, some people wear um, closed, but then it has a no effect on the functionality and the opening of the bag. So it seems like it's just decoration. It also reminds me of the Tory Burch one that again, it's all Kelly inspired, so to speak. Can't speak to the leather quality, obviously, but everybody has been raving about it. I probably wouldn't want to carry this bag even if I were to be gifted, but you know, I, I can see where people are raving about it. And I'm not a big fan in general of the two-tone color. Uh, the twilly, the twill one or the hound's tooth one is pretty unique, but it's again, not to my aesthetic, so to speak. The other one is another quote unquote, um, baguette bag where it's kind of like the Celine box bag, but I don't, honestly, I do not like that logo. I know it stands for Parisa Wang, but the aesthetics of that just doesn't appeal to me at all. So that wraps up my first category. Before I get into the second category, be sure to follow me on Instagram as I do randomly, hopefully more often, post deals that I find on my stories. And if you are even remotely entertained by this particular video, hit that like and subscribe button for me to help support me as I spend more time doing research for you so that I can help you make an informed decision. So getting into the second category where if the brand were to give me a bag or if a family, friend, whatever, gives me a bag, I would totally use it, but I wouldn't spend my money on these particular brands. So the first one, oh, you guys are gonna get mad at me because I know this is super popular, is the Millier. I've been interested in them for a little bit and I've been seeing them all over with YouTube 
um, the YouTubers and they were just raving about it, how it is a dupe for the Celine classic box bag. And, and then after, you know, it calmed down a little bit because I was like about to pull a trigger. I must find out if this is a nice, you know, alternative. And the, the designs of it is actually pretty good. They were started back in 2010 and it seems like they have a pretty ped good pedigree when it comes to the owners. The owner was, you know, a previous, you know, employee at Burberry, LVMH, et cetera, et cetera. So it seems like they have credibility, so to speak. And they are much more transparent on their website on how they um, produce the bags, where they source their materials from, from, how they're really into sustainability, and they do commit to uh, certain charities to help women. So I do appreciate that. Um, they also abide by the U EU standards, and all of their bags are made in Spain. I do also appreciate that they have a one-year full coverage warranty. And then after the one year, you just pay shipping. So as I'm doing more research on Demilier, obviously I'm always going to look in the pre of market before I decide to make a full price purchase, right? If I can find something for cheaper, uh, I want to test it out at a lower cost. But all of the ones I found, especially this particular one, the Vancouver, which I think is the most popular one, the hardware itself is all scratched up. I don't know if it's user error, but you know, maybe when you look at one bag, it's all scratched up. It could just be, you know, the person was really hard on that bag, but every single bag that I've looked at, the hardware is completely like scuffed up and scratched up. So that really just tells me that the quality of the hardware, which is the iconic piece, the so to speak, the highlight or the star of the show, gets scratched up easily, that is not something I want in my collection. The designs are pretty nice, nothing earth shattering. The only one that I think is pretty unique is the Mini Seville. I think that one's pretty cute, especially with the mock croc. And then the other one is the New York Tote. I know this one is pretty popular, but I just that doesn't appeal to me. It just seems like if you look at the pictures of uh, on the model, it just seems like the flaps on the, the two flaps right there, it's like extra leather. It's just going to flap around. Doesn't seem as uniform to me. Moving on to the last brand, which is Strathberry. So this is a brand that has been made popular, extremely popular by Kate Middleton, as she's been seen wearing it multiple times. And this brand was started back in 2013, still a relatively young brand. This is a Scottish brand, and they the story, I guess, behind it is that they went to Spain, they traveled through there, really appreciated the culture and their ability to manufacture really quality bags. And so all of their um, bags are made in Spain, and they go along with the whole Demilier kind of um, ethos where they want sustainability, transparency, as well as committing, you know, giving back to charity. They are very recognizable. I thought about getting this, but then the more I look at it, and I think I've seen reviews on how the bags are, and it seems like the bag can can get pretty heavy. Now, looking at this midi bag, right, the midi tote bag, it seems like it's a decent size, and they do list the weight on their website, which I appreciate, and it's 1.8 pounds. It's pretty heavy for, for you know, regular size bag. And I think also the biggest complaint that people have is that the again, the iconic piece of the design of the bag is annoying, like annoying to get in and out of. So if I find that the bag is annoying to get in and out of, that I automatically just write it off. And then taking a look at the crescent shoulder, which I thought was pretty cute. It's got a classic design and their iconic star highlight design of the, of the bag itself is, is this little two balls with, you know, connecting I don't even know how to describe this. The more I look at it, the more I see a belly button ring <laughs> or like a nose ring. <laughs> like, I don't want that on my bag. Now I'm kind of like, let's move this over to the first category. I just can't unsee this nose ring or belly button ring here anymore. <laughs> now, I hope all of this information helps you in making your next purchase or you just enjoy looking around like I do. Check out my indie bag brand collection here and then whatever the YouTube algorithm thinks that you'll like here. Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less than retail. I'll chat with you next time.